Hello and welcome back to yet another Python tutorial. In this video, we're going to be building ourselves a time management system using Python and Google Calendar. I've said in many videos that when you're learning to code, it's really useful to have an hourly goal of how many hours of coding you want to hit each day. Day because then you can keep yourself accountable and know exactly how many hours you're putting in. But I realized that I never actually know how many hours of deep work I'm putting in every day. So that is why I decided to build a Python script to track my time and know exactly where my time is going every single day. And in this video, you are going to learn how to do exactly all of this step by step. So if you appreciate that, hit the like button down below. We recently hit 100,000 subscribers on this channel and I'm on a mission to make the best coding videos on YouTube so that we can hit a million subscribers. So if you enjoy this video, do join the movement. And with that, let's get into the tutorial. As always, this specific program is going to be for my specific needs, but I highly recommend that you watch through this video, get inspired about what I'm doing because you are going to be learning some very useful skills like how to access the Google Calendar API and in general, figuring out how to do more magical things in Python, which is always very exciting, isn't it? The first thing we need to do is connect to the Google Calendar API. So let's see if I still remember how to do this. So first you need to create a project in the Google Cloud Console. Then you need to go to the left hand side here, click APIs and services, enable APIs and services, then search for Google Calendar. You're going to click on Google Calendar API and click enable. The next thing you need to do is go to OAuth constant screen on the left. The only option you'll have is external. So you're going to click that and create. Then give your app a name, select your email as a user support email. Then you're going to scroll all the way down here and again input your email. Click on add or remove scopes and then essentially just scroll down, find all the ones related to Google Calendar. I have no idea what all of these do, but I'm just selecting all of them just to be safe. Then you're going to go down, click save and continue. Then we continue again. Then you're going to go to credentials, click create credentials and OAuth client ID as application type. I'm just going to put desktop application Then click on create and you're going to click on download JSON. What you need to do with this file is you need to move it to the same folder where you're going to be writing your code and rename it to credentials.json. After that, you can copy this quick start code from this link, which I'm going to leave down below. Before we do this, the only change we'll make is in the scopes, remove the dot read only because what we want to do is give ourselves the ability to actually modify our calendar and not just read it. You should ask for our permission to allow ourselves to access our own app. And that was not supposed to happen. Okay, I figured out what was wrong. In order to fix this error, what we need to do is go down here back to our console and we're going to find add test users. So we're going to add ourselves as a test user for this app to allow ourselves to use our own app. And now when we do this, we can just click on continue and then authorize ourselves to be a user of our app. And voila, we are now connected to the Google Cloud API. If you have some items in your calendar, it should retrieve 10 items for your calendar and show them to you. As you can see, the only only events I have placed in my calendar is to meet my friend Conrad, apparently. So now we can get into some Python magic business. Starting from the main function, what all of this does simply connects you to the API. So we don't need to worry about that. So starting this line, this line 35, we're actually going to wrap this into a function. Now this line is going to connect with the API and instead of getting the upcoming 10 events, what we want to do is essentially save all of the past events from this day into a database. To get the date, we're going to change this a little bit. We're going to go get today's date using daytime.date.today. And basically these lines just give you the time and date from the start of the day in the correct format till the end of the day in the correct format. It's just the format that you need to use with Google Calendar API. You don't need to worry about it. And now for this one, what you need to change is this calendar ID. What you need to do is go to your Google Calendar. And when you go into the settings, you're going to find this ID for the current calendar. For example, for me, I have several calendars. For example, for my programming hours, I have one calendar and I've set up another calendar to track my YouTube hours, for example. And you're going to copy it here. This primary is essentially just going to use your default one. So if you use your default one, you can leave this as primary. We're going to copy this down there. So this whole line is going to be getting events from your calendar. And you want to set up the start time and the end time for the window from which it's going to be grabbing these events. So that's why we've set up this time min to be this time start variable, which we defined before the time max to be this time end that we defined before. And you just set single events true, order by start time and time zone, whatever time zone you have, and then dot execute, which is going to save these events. It is events result variable. Then we're going to go a 
events underscore results dot get. If there's nothing there, I'm gonna go print no upcoming events found. Now, the first thing that we want to be doing is adding up the duration of all the hours that we find based on our API call. It's gonna be a little bit complicated because when we get the time from the API, it's gonna be in this weird ISO time format. We're gonna set it to date time dot time delta which creates the time delta class for seconds, minutes, hours, zero. Why it's like this is gonna become clear in a second. Print, coding hours, then for event in events. Basically, now we first need to get the duration of an event. We need to do a bit of trickery, but it's all good. What we're gonna do is use these lines. So the start of the event is gonna be event.start.get and basically this kind of stuff. Essentially how I found this is on Stack Overflow. So these two are gonna get the start and end time of your event. Event. And what we still need to do is reformat it into this specific format that we want. And for this, we also need to import from date util this parser function. And actually, better names for this would probably be something like start formatted and end formatted. And the duration is simply going to be end formatted minus start formatted. Now we have the duration of the event and we're going to add it to our sum. This we can simply do by going to the duration plus equals duration. And then we're just gonna print on the command line, summary of the event and the duration. And at the end of all of this, we're gonna print total coding time with the total, total duration. And we're gonna remove these default lines right here because we're not gonna need them anymore. And we've just got this error handler here automatically as well. And now lastly, of course, in our main function up here, we're going to just make sure we run our function, commit hours with crafts inside. When we run this, I've set up some test events on my own calendar, so they should show up. And as you can see, it grabs these two events, which which I've got on my Google Calendar and shows the total time as the sum of all of this. Now, next thing, we're gonna set up an SQL database to save these hours into so that we can grab them later in later dates and compare where our time is going to over time. But first, I need to confess you something. I didn't actually used to be very good at SQL at all. And that was because I could never really find the right resource that would teach me SQL in a way that I could understand it. And also that would be engaging enough to make the learning process enjoyable because that's what it's really all about for me. So when some time ago I got reached out to by learnsql.com, I was like, yeah, why not? I'll try out your courses. And I was actually very, very impressed. I ended up even doing these courses myself. And that is why I'm very happy to say that I have partnered with learnsql.com for them to sponsor this video. If you want to learn and practice SQL, LearnSQL.com have a set of over 50 hands-on SQL courses. Their platform offers a 100% online experience where you have no need to install anything on your device and everything seamlessly happens through your favorite web browser. All LearnSQL.com courses are interactive and based on real-world business scenarios, meaning when you write SQL queries, you'll be seeing the results instantly. I honestly think that LearnSQL has some of the best SQL courses out there. I can personally vouch for them because they actually helped me and their reviews and reputation definitely agrees. You'll find a link to learnsql.com on the first line of the description for you to check out their offer and choose one of the learning paths from either SQL, PostgreSQL or TSQL. So go check them out below today and I want to thank learnsql.com for sponsoring this video. And obviously at this point we're just doing this for my programming hours. If you want to track your time watching anime, I won't, I won't judge you. So first we're gonna go and import SQLite. And next it is time to learn how to use SQL. Then I've actually defined this other file where we essentially create the table where these hours are gonna be saved. This one you just need to run once. So first we're gonna create the actual file and connect to it using these lines up here. Then we're gonna go con.execute. And whenever you run SQL commands using Python, you need to start it using three of these single quotation marks, then create table and the name of the table and then all the columns of the table that you want. So we want a date, which is gonna be of type, date, not null, category, which is text, and hours, which is an integer. And again, if all of this is confusing to you, go do some courses from learnersql.com. Basically, you will just run this once to initialize the table, and then we can continue on with our main file. We're again gonna to get today's date go by going datetime.date.today. We first need to format our time a little bit. We're gonna go format the to total duration equals total underscore duration dot seconds, which is gonna get all the time in seconds and then divided by 60 divided by 60, which is gonna get it in hours. This is so that we can actually input it as an actual number into a database rather than this weird Google Calendar API time format. Coding underscore hours equals couple of date, the name of coding. This is just sort of in the table, I can separate what are coding hours and what are YouTube hours and whatever else I want to add to it. 
the future. So that's a category and then formatted total duration as the time. And to execute this cur.execute and then these lines insert into table name values. And this is gonna look a bit weird. Basically what this does is these question marks, which is the values that are gonna be inserted into the table are gonna be replaced by this tuple that we created up above here. And after that, all you have to do is dot on dot commit. You're gonna commit our changes into the table. And after you run this, if there's no errors, you should find this ours.db file on your left. And if you're on VS code, in order to actually view this, you're gonna have to install this SQLite viewer extension. And with any other text editor, you can probably Google how to view these database files on your coding editors but as you can see in here I've already got some hours from my previous days and once you run this file what should happen is that my today's hours are added into the database so we're gonna try that you can see coding hours added the database successfully and when we refresh this you can actually see that today's hours which is 9th of August are successfully in the database first step of our program done wasn't too bad was it Give yourself a pattern in the back and let's keep going. The next thing we want to do is be able to create an event just from our command line, just from our Python program, rather than having to open up Google Calendar, create a new event and do all of that, which just takes a lot of time essentially. We're going to create another function called add event. And inside of there, we're going to have to pass a couple of things, first the credits, then a duration that we want to give to our event and a description to the event. For now, this is just going to be arguments to the function, but at the end of the video, I'm going to show you how to do this directly from the command line using shell scripting. Again, we're going to do some stuff with the time. Essentially, you just go daytime.daytime.utc now. A couple of more lines, but essentially what we're doing here is creating an event from the current time up until however many hours we define as the duration. So the end time is going to be daytime.daytime .daytime start plus a daytime dot time delta which creates this delta so essentially a difference from the current time into the end time and the way we just do this is using this line right here and inside the hours we're going to define as a duration and then again we're going to need to do some formatting format is going to be start dot iso format plus this z letter which i don't know exactly how this works but essentially this is again just a format that the google calendar api wants then we're going to need to define this event variable right here essentially this here is going to define what our event is going to be. You know, on Google Calendar, when you go to manually add an event using the GUI, it's going to give you a lot of options to give you like notifications about it, the description, the time, the name, the category, all of that. And using code, the way we define this is using this object right here. And I've just got the bare bones of the things that I actually wanted to put inside the event. If you want to put more information than this, you can go do the Google Calendar API documentation down below. And it's going to show you all the options that you can give to your event. But essentially, all I need is the summary, which is the description variable, which we've defined as an argument of the function. Start day, which is going to be in this kind of weird format again, where the daytime is the start formatted, which we just created. Time zone, again, my time zone, which is in London in the UK. And then end is going to be this end formatted variable, which we just created. Then we're going to go service equals very similar thing to we did in the past. Then to actually insert this event in the calendar, we're going to go service dot events insert. This is the key function right here. Again, the calendar ID, you're going to select the same calendar ID you want to add it to. And then a body equals this event variable that we defined. And then simply dot execute, which is actually going to place this event into your Google Calendar, which is going to be pretty exciting. And then at the end, you're just going to print event created, show yourself that it was created successfully. Now, we're just going to define all these variables. Let's say a duration of two hours and a description of hello YouTube. And once we run this, you'd actually arrive in my calendar. And of course, there's an error. Okay, I figured it out. What we need to do instead is in here as well, just go daytime.daytime.utc now and then add this time delta to get the end. Now, when we run this, it should work. And as you can see, the Hello YouTube event is in our Google Calendar straight from our Python code. Isn't that amazing? If you're finding that amazing, leave a like down below. Now, we're almost done. What we now just need to do is be able to do this from our command line. First, we need ways to run either this commit hours function or the add event function, not both. We first need to import from sys argb. And if you're not familiar with argb, argb is essentially just allows you to access command line arguments that you pass your Python function from the command line. And here we're gonna go if argb one, so argb zero is always just gonna be your program name. Argb one equals, let's say if we give it the argument of add. Then what we want to do is run this add event function. 
Whereas if the first argument is, let's say, commit, then we want to run the commit hours function. And obviously for the add, we would need to be able to get the parameters of the function from the command line. So let's say the first argument is gonna be the duration, the second is gonna be the description. We're gonna set duration as argv2 and the description as argv3. And then to the function, all we're gonna do is pass in the duration and the description that we got through the commit. We basically don't need to do any of that. The idea how I'm gonna be using this is that whenever I start working, I run this add function to add an event for however many hours of deep work I wanna do in that moment. And then at the end of the day, I just run this commit function to commit all the hours of the day into the database. So I'm gonna by add let's say a three hour event and so it'll work because for some reason it's taking it in as a string rather than an integer. So we're just gonna go in back into the add event function and make this duration forced into an integer. And now let's see if it works. Seems to have worked. The last thing we're gonna do is essentially gonna be creating an alias to run this program from this directory with just one command. Open up your finder and you know, click command shift period to show your hidden files. Exciting, right? If you're on Mac, you're gonna find this .z profile file and open it. And in here, you can create these aliases. We'll go alias, and then let's say time manager equals. Then we're gonna grab present working directory. We're gonna set it right here like this and the name of the file. Essentially, this is just an alias for this full part of the program. Okay, so to make this work, you have to restart your terminal window. It looks like in order to make this work, what I also had to do is copy the credential.json file into the root directory, which opens up when you open a new terminal window. With that, as you do it, it's gonna ask you to authorize again. And once you do that, you can create events in your calendar and run this whole thing just from your terminal window without having to actually open up your Python file. And the last thing, is a function which I've done for myself, which is this get hours function, which allows you to, as I said, get all the hours and show them to you. Now this one, I will actually leave to you as an exercise. As I always say, the best way to learn to code is to do stuff for yourself. And I believe with this background knowledge that I've done in the past using it, uh, Googling it, using Stack Overflow, Google Calendar API documentation, you should be able to figure out how to do this. The goal of our program is that you can run your program again, just with some keyword, then define how many days you want to get the hours from, we're gonna say five for example, and it's going to show you all your hours from these days as well as calculate the total and calculate the average and print them all to you. I am going to leave my code for this specific function down below in the description, which you can look at as a solution or as inspiration if you do get stuck. Do definitely try to do this yourself first. If this was helpful to you, you're welcome to use exactly what I did. But what I obviously recommend you do is figure out how to apply this for your specific needs. As I always say, most exciting thing about coding is building stuff that's useful for you and allows you to do things, automate things that you do anyway, just optimize your life essentially. For more Python tutorials like this, I made these two videos up here. They've been extremely popular on my channel, so I think you'll really enjoy them. Also, if you enjoyed this video, I highly recommend you subscribe to the channel. I'm on a mission to make the best coding videos on the internet. We're gonna hit a million subscribers. Go join the movement down below. With that, let's all keep coding and enjoy the journey along the way. I will see you next time.